am Natalie Munoz. Oh, I will start again. I'm Natalie Munoz. I teach French and I decided to do at Fresno State what we called the High Flex, which was both in person and Zoom synchronous. There was not an asynchronous component to my class. Now, you may be wondering why is this not going? Here we go. Uh, why I chose the high flex option because French is obviously a course that requires a lot of participation. And so, one of the reasons I did it is because some of my higher level courses had low enrollment due to conflicts, due to student situations, and so I wanted to accommodate them as much as possible. One of my classes had an early start time of 8 a.m. and this was very difficult for commuters to be there by 8. Um, some of them came from Merced, some came from Visalia, the, both those places are about an hour drive, and so um, I wanted to give them an option to attend virtually. And also equity. At the time we did this, there were a lot of students who um, had chosen not to be vaccinated, and so I wanted to um, respect some of theirs, uh, a, you know, request to give them an option to still attend class without um, infringing on their rights. And the last reason is that I kept what we called at Fresno State the guide on the go. This was a student who um, was in the classroom with me at the beginning. And we had the option to keep this student with us through the entire time. And this student was trained um, in all the high flex, all the equipment that was needed. And I used her and she became my chat jockey. She helped students troubleshoot when they had problems with their own technology. She helped um, me with my technology problems. And then she was also able to communicate with students and control the breakout rooms. And she even learned a little French. I was able to teach her how to say, close the breakout room, open the breakout room. Um, send a message and it, it, we had a lot of fun. So as you may imagine, language re classes require high engagement. Students must talk. The whole point of the class is for them to talk. And so um, I tried to focus on the following things in my class. Um, I used to be a very spontaneous teacher. I used to do things differently almost every single day. Instead, I found that creating routines in the classroom was very helpful so that no matter when or where the students were coming in, they understood what was going on because all of my directions are in French. You have to remember that as well. So by creating routines that helped create predictability and caused um, more confidence in the students. I also only use Google tools, again, just to create that sort of predictability, familiarity. And it just helps students um, connect with each other because they can obviously work on documents simultaneously. I also tried to limit the types of activities that I did. Again, I used to be very spontaneous. I had tons of games, tons of activities. So I still did all of those things. I just limited them so that every time I rolled out an activity, it became something familiar that they had already done and seen. I used index cards to take notes, um, just as Kevin said. One of the ways to also make sure that everybody gets called on or everybody is has a chance to participate. Um, I do allow students to raise their hand and answer, but I routinely go through index cards. And if I have 25 students in the class, I may go through that stack of cards three times. So that's 75 answers that I am getting out of these students because I can just ensure that everybody has a chance and we can go through it quickly. I also put little notes on my cards. I have their name on one side and on the back, I might put something like BS, which doesn't sound, doesn't stand for BS. That's for my, my notes. That was black screen that I called on this person and all I saw was a black screen. They didn't answer. And so I just put a little note BS on that date so that I could email them and say, Hey, um, I called on you in class and you were in Zoom and you didn't respond and all I saw was a black screen. Can you let me know what's going on? Are you okay? Did you have a problem? Um, so I just used it to jot down notes so that I could then follow up with students, not to penalize them, but to prompt them and to um, know that I am paying attention to them. Again, I also used my guide on the go and she was very helpful. Um, she saved me tons of time. She allowed me to go through activities quickly because she understood after a while my routines and we created a 
system of um, communication where she knew exactly what I needed to do. And it took about two weeks and we got down in this really great uh, rhythm. But the most important thing I wanna share with you today is the self-assessment rubric for participation. And I think this really helped my students know what good participation is. One of the most controversial parts of a grade is when I graded for participation in the past. And it was just like, I think you are giving good answers and you're participating all the time. And that may not correspond with the student's view of themselves. Sometimes students think they are, or they are in fact, giving the best they can on that given day and they can't give anymore. But I may view that as less than because I have a higher standard of participation. Um, also, uh, I just want to put this in here really fast. Before I began the entire semester, I put up some tips for being a good Zoomer so that when students did go to the Zoom room on occasion, they knew what to do. And my number one most important thing was get out of bed. <laughs> so if they are in bed, they are triggering their mind to go to sleep. It is a, just a natural reaction that bed triggers sleep relaxation. Um, I asked them to prepare their space, uh, to turn off and silence their phone and to take notes. And I link to a document um, in this Zoom or this Google doc that I have shared with you here, um, the benefits of taking notes. I tell them, please do not take screenshots of the presentation. Do, don't take screenshots either when you're in a classroom or on Zoom, taking notes actually um, stimulates more recognition of the material later on. Um, I allow them to keep their camera on or off, but if they're in a breakout room, I ask them if I urge them to keep their camera on because it's easier for students to communicate to each other in breakout rooms because we are speaking French. Um, it's really disconcerting to talk to a black screen in a different language. And I always ask them to be ready to unmute. So just a few guides um, at the very beginning to set the stage for good participation later on, which then leads me to the self-assessment rubric. So what I did is I allow all of my students to um, grade themselves for participation. I don't give them a grade, they give themselves a grade. And however you want to determine the value of self of, of participation, that, that's up to you. I usually gave 50 points, so 50 being the highest, zero being the lowest. And if I can share this with you here, let me do this. Um, I just want to go over this for a, a minute. And I have this in Canvas. It's a quiz that they fill out four times during the semester, once right at the very beginning, two times in the middle, and then their final self-assessment. So what I always try to tell them is what you always want to ask yourself is, did I come to class on time? Did I come to class prepared? Did I participate fully in class today? Did I pay attention when others, including the professor, were speaking? So this is these are just guiding questions that they need to know every single day. And it seems obvious to us, but students actually don't consider these things as part of participation. So these are my descriptors for good participation. And this is the A plus, and these are the always things that people do. And if students feel that they always do this, I allow them to give themselves an A plus, and that would be 50 points. Um, I, I don't question that. If they feel that they are always doing that, then I give them that. And some students really do always do this, and I allow them to keep that grade. Most students will be in the A, which is the most of the time, or the B, over half the time. And I honestly think that they genuinely get their grade almost spot on. They almost always give themselves the exact same grade that I would give them. So the most of the time, and I don't even describe what most of the time means. I say most of the time is what they think most of the time is. If they think most of the time is 80%, then that's fine. If they think most of the time is 70%, then that's fine. I, I'm not going to tell them what they think most of the time means. So most of the time, I engage and listen to my classmates and the professor. Most of the time, I arrive fully prepared. Most of the time, I am present and I have an informed answer. Most of the time I play an active role in discussions. Most of the time I comment in a way that advances the level and depth of discussion. Most of the time I try to improve the dynamic of the discussion in a positive way. 
And most of the time, I was not absent at any time for illegitimate reasons. Illegitimate reasons are I overslept. Um, I didn't feel like coming. I have legitimate reasons. And I don't even question whether they feel that their absence was legitimate or illegitimate. They truly are usually very honest with me. And um, I've never really had a problem with students saying that or, or claiming to be sick when they weren't sick or claiming to have, um, you know, a problem of family health care issue when they didn't. The other one that most of the students give themselves is a B. And I, this is over half the time that they make a sincere effort, um, that they arrive fully prepared. Less than half the time, I'm not fully prepared. So over half the time they are, but less than full half the time they are not. Over half the time I am present and I have an answer when called on. Over half the time I participate constructively in discussions, but I may not add much to the discussion. Over half the time I make relevant comments based on the assigned material. I do not go off on tangents. Over half the time I advance the discussion. The discussion is mostly better, but never worse because of my comments. And over half the time I may have missed one class for illegitimate reasons. And these are the from the previous uh, self-assessment to the current one. So they're just looking at a short, maybe four week window of that. So they can grade themselves better or worse depending on their opinion of themselves. Um, and then I'm, I won't go over the C and D, but it just kind of goes down from there. And so I give them these guidelines and we go over it at the very beginning of class. And the reason is, is so that they know what I consider to be good participation and that they understand what it means to be a good participant in a Zoom class and in person. But the most important part of the rubric is not just the my grade is, and they give themselves the grade, but the follow-up is that is in your own words, explain why you deserve the grade you chose. And they are usually very, very honest. And they'll often, they will grade themselves more harshly than I would have graded them. And then the second follow-up question is, what is your plan for improving your participation? And Students can then think about, do I need to review the material more before I come to class? Do I need to um, ask more questions of my partner instead of just answering the questions? And so it gives them a chance to reflect on what they've done since the last participation self-assessment and to make an improvement plan. And I always put on here, the instructor reserves the right to change the grade based on observation and attendance records. But I will tell you that 99% of the time I change the grade and I raise the grade because students tend to be overly critical of themselves and not overly generous. Um, so I really like doing this. And then the last part um, I wanna go over about the self-assessment rubric is between the second and third assessment, um, I asked them, how has your participation improved since the last self-assessment? And if it was already very good, what have you done to maintain consistency? And then for the final self-assessment, um, I asked them overall, is participation important for your learning? How do you think participation with other students help you learn? And do you plan on maintaining this level of participation in other classes? And I asked them to explain. So all of those things go into their participation grade. Um, but I have found that by setting out clear um, criteria and clear expectations and letting them be self-reflective about their participation has improved and increased my level of participation in both Zoom and in person. So my one quick activity for you is what criteria is important to you for participation in your class? So if you think about that, I'm gonna give you one minute to think about this, but in the chat section, I'd like you to add one criteria description for good participation in your class. If you were to do a self-assessment rubric, what is one thing that you think would be important for students to know and to be able to self-assess? So again, take about one minute and then when you're ready, add that to the chat. That's it. That's my little contribution for um, trying to increase engagement and participation. Thank you so much, Dr. Munoz. And I love the fact that this is rooted in your experience that you learned as you went and you shared uh, what worked. And I saw in the chat a number of people uh, deciding that they are going to take this on themselves. Some questions about workload. And I think when you and I chatted that you felt that this was less work than you creating their participation on your own. But if you wanna to speak to that and then 
as you do, let's let our final speakers, Hillary Kaplowitz and Susanna Marcello, uh, get set up. Um, creating the initial quiz with the participation rubric took me a lot of time, especially since I had to think about what was important. But once you have it, you just keep copying the rubric and you can just change those questions. And I just read through it and I'm just like, I agree, I agree. I just give them the grade. Honestly, they are very self-critical. <laughs> and students, they are so harsh on this. And I really love telling students, I think you're doing so much better than you do. So I'm bumping your grade up. And that gives such great motivation and support to students when you can do that. Nice. Well, let's keep those ideas coming in the chat. I'm going to stop the recording and then I'll start it again when Hillary and Susanna let me know that it's time to go.